Hello students, it's good to be back with you again and today I continue with the dural venous sinuses. So we uh, classify these dural venous sinuses as paired and unpaired venous sinuses. But before I do that, I want to uh, tell you the difference between these dural venous sinuses and the arteries and the veins, normal arteries and veins. So students, these dural venous sinuses, they do not have a tunica media. They don't have a mus they don't have muscle in their walls okay so these dural venous sinuses are just lined by endothelium and there are no valves as they are present in veins so these dural venous sinuses have got no smooth muscle they have got no valves and these dural venous sinuses always remember they drain into the internal jugular vein okay so you should keep this in mind and now we classify these dural venous sinuses into uh, paired and unpaired venous sinuses. So, uh, before I start with the paired venous sinuses, I want to show you some structures in the skull and this is of practical importance. I want you to know uh, these structures, okay, where they are located. Now, if you look at the norma basalis here, what do we find here? Norma basalis is there. Then, if I slightly uh, tilt it, okay, so here we find the presence of the jugular foramen. So now the probe, my probe is in the jugular foramen and you can make out here it's coming out. So this is the jugular foramen, very clearly visible jugular foramen. Now just on the side of this jugular foramen, if I tilt the skull, there is a cup shaped depression here like this, okay, it is like this, like a cup. So this is for the superior bulb of internal jugular vein. This will become significant when I talk later on in the class. The superior bulb of internal jugular vein lies here in the jugular fossa and this is the jugular foramen. Then if you look at the norma basalis, you find here the medial and lateral pterygoid plates. So they are here and in relation to these uh, medial and lateral pterygoid plates on either side, there is a venous plexus which is uh, referred to as the pterygoid plexus of Okay. So once again, I want to show you the jugular foramen, right? And just adjacent to the jugular foramen is a cup-shaped area, which is for the, uh, it is a hollowed out area for the superior bulb of internal jugular vein. What else do we see here? This is the carotid canal. This is the spinosphenoid. Okay. So in relation to that is the foramen, spinosum, foramen ovale, lateral pterygoid plate, medial pterygoid plate. Fine. So now I start describing the paired venous sinuses. Um, you may learn them in any way, but if you follow my uh, way, way uh, one thing is sure that you won't forget it. Okay, because there's a logical sequence in which uh, I'm going to teach. You see the impression here on the cerebral surface of the temporal bone. This is for the middle meningeal vein or sinus. So the first sinus is the middle meningeal sinus. Okay, so this, uh, you know, middle meningeal vessels, they lie on the medial aspect of the tyrion. So they are lying on the cerebral surface towards the cerebral hemisphere of the temporal bone. So middle meningeal sinus impressions are there and this middle meningeal vein is actually closer to the bone compared to the middle meningeal artery. And therefore it is more liable to rupture in case of fracture of tyrion. So mostly the extradural hematoma is due to uh, rupture of middle meningeal artery which lies along with the middle meningeal vein but the trauma to the bone uh, it is going to cause the rupture of the middle meningeal vein also and this middle meningeal vein has got an anterior trunk or frontal trunk and a posterior trunk or parietal trunk. The anterior trunk may drain into a sinus lying along the posterior border of lesser wing of sphenoid bone known as sphenoparietal sinus or the anterior trunk may drain into the cavernous sinus or the anterior trunk may drain into the oval foramen here in the middle cranial fossa and that oval foramen is called foramen ovale. Okay. So this is the foramen ovale. So anterior trunk or frontal trunk of middle meningeal vein has got three options. In some cases it drains into the lesser wing of sphenoid bone, in some case into the cavernous sinus and in some cases into the foramen ovale. And through the foramen ovale, it goes to the pterygoid plexus of veins. The parietal trunk of middle meningeal vein, on the other hand, 
it passes through the foramen spinosum okay so it passes through the foramen spinosum so this is foramen ovale this is foramen spinosum this is spine of sphenoid it passes through the foramen spinosum to come in relation to the to form the pterygoid plexus of wave so it comes in relation to the pterygoid plates the red one comes in relation to the pterygoid plates after passing through foramen spinosum to form the pterygoid plexus of waves. So this is about the middle meningeal sinus, which is the first sinus we are going to talk about. The paired sinus. The second paired sinus is the sinus along the lesser wing of sphenoid bone. So that is called the sphenoparietal sinus. So this sphenoparietal sinus, it drains into the cavernous sinus, which extends from the superior orbital fissure to the apex of petrous part of temporal bone, the foramen lacerum lies in relation to its floor. So this is how you should remember students. The paired venous sinuses, the middle meningeal vein or sinus, anterior trunk of which can drain into sphenoparietal sinus, sphenoparietal sinus lying along the posterior border of lesser wing of sphenoid bone, which drains into the cavernous sinus. And this cavernous sinus now has got two options. It can it, 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 it will drain into the superior petrosal sinus and it will also drain into the inferior petrosal sinus. So superior petrosal sinus lies along the attached margin of the fox cerebelli anterolaterally uh, on the superior border of this apex of on the superior border of petrous part of temporal bone. Okay. So, superior petrosal sinus, if you are asked to mark, you mark it along the superior border of petrous part of temporal bone. So, cavernous sinus drains into superior petrosal sinus. It also drains into inferior petrosal sinus lying in this fissure, which is referred to as petro occipital fissure because it is between petrous bone and occipital bone. So, this inferior petrosal sinus, it goes towards this foramen, which is the jugular foramen. And this inferior petrosal sinus drains into the superior bulb of internal jugular vein, which I had showed you. It lies in this hollow area. Okay. So inferior petrosal sinus drains into superior bulb of internal jugular vein, while the superior petrosal sinus, which lies along the attached margin of the Fox cerebelli, it drains into the transfer sinus. So this is the internal occipital protuberance or the confluence of sinuses. So this is where the transfer sinus is. So, superior petrosal sinus will drain into the transverse sinus. Okay. Now, in some cases it is present, but it may not be present. There is another paired sinus, which is uh, referred to as the petrosquamous sinus. So, this petrosquamous sinus lies between the petrous part of temporal bone and the squamous part of temporal bone. So, this petrosquamous sinus also drains into the transverse sinus. So, this transverse sinus which extends from internal occipital protuberance to the posterior inferior angle of parietal bone, this transfer sinus receives the superior petrosal sinus. In some cases, the petrosquamous sinus between the petrous part of temporal bone and the squamous part of temporal bone, but this is obliterated, I told you, in most of the cases. So, superior petrosal sinus, petrosquamous sinus, then this transfer sinus also receives the inferior cerebellar veins and it also receives the inferior cerebral veins, okay? And this transfer sinus itself, it drains into an S-shaped sinus, which extends from the posterior inferior angle of parietal bone up to the jugular foramen. This S-shaped sinus between the, my probe here and my finger here, this S-shaped sinus is the sigmoid sinus. It is called sigmoid sinus because of its S-shape. Okay, so this transfer sinus on either side is going to drain into the sigmoid sinus. So it begins from posterior inferior angle of parietal bone and it passes up to the jugular foramen. So where is the jugular foramen? This is the jugular foramen. Okay, and this uh, sigmoid sinus is going to drain into the superior bulb of internal jugular vein, just like the inferior petrosal sinus. So are you ready for a quick revision now? Okay, anterior trunk of middle meningeal vein may drain into sphenoparietal sinus. Sphenoparietal sinus does drain into cavernous sinus. Cavernous sinus will drain into superior petrosal sinus, inferior petrosal sinus. Inferior petrosal sinus will go to superior bulb of internal jugular vein. 
superior petrosal sinus will drain into the transverse sinus transverse sinus will drain into the sigmoid sinus and the sigmoid sinus will drain into the superior bulb of internal jugular vein okay now uh, uh, i think uh, if you remember in this sequence now what are the paired venous sinuses shall we name them well they are the middle meningeal sinus the sphenoparietal sinus the cavernous sinus how many three superior petrosal sinus fourth inferior petrosal sinus between the petrous part of temporal bone and the occipital bone this is the fifth one inferior petrosal sinus sixth one will be the petrous squamous sinus which may or may not be present seventh one is the transverse sinus so these are and once again if i tell you you have middle meningeal vein two the sphenoparietal three cavernous four superior petrosal five inferior petrosal six petrosquamous seventh transverse sinus and the eighth this s shaped sigmoid sinus so there are eight paired sinuses so if you remember this way students you won't forget okay so eight paired sinuses are there and they are ultimately draining into the internal jugular vein now we talk about the unpaired venous sinus now unpaired venous sinuses we did that day that there is a there is a fold which is referred to as fox cerebri okay so if you remember this fold so then uh, along its upper margin superior sagittal sinus along its lower margin inferior sagittal sinus and this is going to separate the right and left cerebral hemispheres and along its attached margin the straight sinus the straight sinus is formed by the union of inferior sagittal sinus with the great cerebral vein and this straight sinus mostly drains into the right transverse sinus yes and uh, then we have some sinuses in relation to the uh, we have some sinuses in relation to the this was fox cerebri so another fold which separates the right and left cerebellar hemispheres was the fox cerebelli so let me Refresh your mind, Fox cerebelli. Okay, the sinus in relation to it was the occipital sinus. So we have got three sinuses in relation to the Fox cerebri, and one sinus in relation to the Fox cerebelli. So how many sinuses unpaired we have? Four. Occipital sinus in relation to Fox cerebelli, and superior sagittal, inferior sagittal, and straight sinus in relation to the Fox cerebri. Okay, so we have these four unpaired sinuses. Then once again we did that. Circular fold which covers the uh, pituitary gland diaphragma cella, which has got an aperture in the center for the infundibulum of pituitary gland. So this uh, diaphragma cella it covers the superior surface of the pituitary gland, and along its anterior margin is the anterior intercavernous sinus along its posterior margin is the posterior intercavernous sinus and then we have another sinus which is present along the clivus okay and that is called the basilar venous plexus now this basilar venous plexus joins the two inferior petrosal sinuses and it itself drains into the internal vertebral venous plexus so once again unpaired venous sinuses to remember the unpaired venous sinuses you remember the folds of the dura mater okay meningeal folds so you remember the fox cerebri fox cerebri has got superior sagittal sinus along its upper margin and uh, there's a correction here superior sagittal sinus mostly drains into the right transverse sinus yes so fox cerebri contains the superior sagittal sinus along its upper margin unpaired venous sinus and unpaired venous sinus along its lower margin known as inferior sagittal sinus this unpaired venous sinus it unites with the straight sin uh, with the great cerebral vein to form the straight sinus this straight sinus mostly uh, it drains into the left transverse sinus okay so superior sagittal sinus inferior sagittal sinus and straight sinus are three unpaired venous sinuses in relation to the fox cerebri the unpaired venous sinus in relation to the fox cerebelli is the occipital sinus okay 
So this is the fourth unpaired venous sinus. Then we have got two unpaired venous sinuses in relation to the anterior and posterior margins of the diaphragma cella. So how many unpaired venous sinuses we have done so far? Superior sagittal, inferior sagittal straight in relation to Fox cerebri, occipital sinus in relation to Fox cerebelli, anterior and posterior intercavernous sinus in relation to diaphragma cella, and then the vertebral, uh, this uh, basilar plexus of veins in relation to the clivus. This basilar plexus of veins is going to communicate. It is lying on the basilar part of the occipital bone and it is communicating with the inferior petrosal sinuses on either side and it is commun also communicating with the internal vertebral venous plexus below. Okay, so we have got eight paired sinuses and seven unpaired sinuses. So students from an examination point of view, you know, these sinuses, they are important. The question which comes in the examination is enumerate the venous sinuses. So you should know there are eight paired sinuses and there are seven unpaired venous sinuses. You should know their names, their locations and you can be asked to show on the skull the location of these venous sinuses. So you should uh, practice with the skulls in your hand and you should try to locate these sinuses. Uh, on the skull. So, sinuses you can show in the skull superior sagittal sinuses beginning from the crista gali and the frontal crest is the impression of the superior sagittal sinus. Okay, then this sinus goes like this posteriorly and it goes up to the internal occipital protuberance. Okay, so this is also an impression for the superior sagittal sinus. Superior sagittal sinus mostly drains into the right transfer sinus. The inferior sagittal sinus will join with the great cerebral vein to form the straight sinus that drains into the left transverse sinus. Okay, so transverse sinus is lying along the attached margin of Fox cerebelli posterior inferiorly, while the superior petrosal sinus is lying anterolaterally along the attached margin of Fox cerebelli. Okay, and then I have already told you the location of these sinuses. Once again, these are the impressions for the middle meningeal veins. This is the position of the sphenoparietal sinus. This is the position of the cavernous sinus on either side of body of sphenoid bone. This is the position for superior petrosal sinus. This is the position for inferior petrosal sinus. This is the position for the transverse sinus. This is the position for the sinus which may, which is mostly not present. So that is called petrosquamous sinus. And then uh, this is the position for the sigmoid sinus. And sigmoid sinus and inferior petrosal sinus, they are both draining into the superior bulb of internal jugular vein, which is lying in the jugular fossa, this cup shaped depression, which is near the jugular. Okay, so you keep these things in mind and you practice them on the skull again and again. And uh, I thank you for your response. The last time, the question which I asked you, how is this straight sinus formed? You gave me a good response, and I thank all the students who responded. And uh, so students uh, keep practicing and if you have any doubts, you can always communicate with me at my number 9815542792. And um, I thank you for your time. And till the next time we meet, it's bye from me. Take care.